Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about electroconvulsive therapy. I am Dr. Suresh Badudmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about the history of convulsive therapy, history of electroconvulsive therapy, mechanism of action and also the controversies revolving around electroconvulsive therapy. Electroconvulsive therapy, it is also called by shock treatment, current treatment, brain stimulation treatment, electroshock treatment and in simple term ECT. In this video, I will be calling it as ECT rather than the full form electroconvulsive therapy. What is ECT? ECT is a therapeutic medical procedure for the treatment of severe psychiatric disorders. The primary purpose of ECT is to rapidly relieve psychiatric symptoms. Suppose the patient is very violent, we may use ECT. Or else if the patient is having suicidal ideas, deliberate self-harm, electroconvulsive therapy plays a crucial role in such patients. In ECT, invariably a small dose of electrical current is passed through the brain that induces seizure. This seizure is therapeutic process for curing mental illness. In shortly, I will be discussing what is the mechanism of action of this ECT and how it relieves psychiatric symptoms. ECT is found to be effective in many psychiatric conditions and it is one of the most controversial treatment which is available at this point of time. From the community perspective, it is considered as highly stigmatizing, discriminating, inhuman and it, many of them even call by giving ECT, we are violating human rights. But please do remember, it is one of the oldest biological treatment in the medical field. In spite of many controversies, opposition, majority of the countries do use ECT. That means, since it is there since long, many years, almost more than 90 years, but still ECT is used. That means there is something in ECT which cures psychiatric disorder. Let's understand what are the different types of electroconvulsive therapy. One is modified electroconvulsive therapy, another one is unmodified. What is this difference? Unmodified ECT means the patient will receive electroconvulsive therapy without anesthesia and muscle relaxant. Here the patient will receive ECT directly without getting any kind of anesthesia. In modified ECT, the patient will receive first anesthesia and then muscle relaxant. Once the patient is unconscious, then only electrical stimulation is given to the brain. That is one of the classification. The second classification is placement of electrode. If the electrode is placed on both the side of the head, that is on the both the side of the brain, hemisphere, we call it as bilateral ECT. Or else if you are placing on only one side of the hemisphere, it is called as unilateral ECT. The way you are going to place the electrodes, whether it is temporal lobe or else in the frontal lobe, Depending upon that, the classification is also done. So, please do remember, that means placement of electrodes classification also is very essential in understanding how the ECT is given. The next kind, if the classification is the type of electrical current is given, whether is it a sine wave or else pulse wave, ultra brief pulse, alternate current or else direct current. Depending upon the type of current, we can divide or classify electroconvulsive therapy. And ECT is not a permanent treatment. The effect of ECT lasts for few days to weeks. That means, although it causes rapid resolution of symptoms, but the effect is very short. That means, you need to give medications along with ECT. ECT is indicated only whenever there is a rapid resolution of treatment is required. However, 
if the medication do not work then also ect is used for augmenting medical augmenting the medications in the long run it is the medication which is essential electroconvulsive therapy is used whenever a rapid resolution of symptom is required please remember this and the effect of ect lasts for few days to weeks let's understand the history of electroconvulsive therapy if you know the history then you will be able to understand why there is lot of resistance how it evolved and what is the mechanism of action behind this electroconvulsive therapy first and the foremost you need to understand about the biological antagonism the idea that disease could be cured by inducing an another disease was proposed by dr wagner jorag who observed that high fever caused a symptomatic improvement in general paralysis of insane especially in syphilitic patients by inducing high fever by providing malarial uh, fever the syphilitic paralysis of insane was cured and this was considered as biological antagonism that means one illness will cure the other illness and dr wagner jograg was awarded nobel prize in 1927 for this biological antagonism theory it was considered to be one of the landmark breakthrough understanding about curing various diseases please remember in 1927 we did not know what is the cause for syphilis and today we do not know the cause of mental illness exactly hence by taking the indication from this biological antagonism from dr wagner jorag dr ladislas john von meduna introduced this similar kind of treatment so he observed whenever there is a seizures psychiatric patient improved now the similar biological antagonism was coined by dr ladislas j von meduna in short dr meduna said that seizures and psychosis do not come together that means if a patient has psychosis and if he gets a seizure psychosis gets remitted from this contrast thinking dr radislas john wen meduna wanted to induce seizure in psychiatric patient that was the introduction of convulsive therapy and convulsive therapy for dementia precox was first introduced as i mentioned radislas meduna on january 2nd 1934 he first conducted the human experiment by injecting intramuscular camphor he wanted to introduce seizure in, into the patient and in the subsequent 2 years dr meduna treated more than 100 patients who recovered from psychosis significantly that was the first biological treatment in the history of psychiatry my dear friends a new therapeutic era of psychiatry began at this point of time and this was a landmark treatment which started in 1934 remember this it is almost 90 years back meduna achieved 40 to 50% cure rate in patients with dementia precox dementia precox is nothing but schizophrenia within 3 years of convulsive therapy it became available worldwide it was considered as one of the landmark treatment in the history of mankind at the same time many of the people started using insulin therapy or insulin coma therapy lobotomy was used and at this point of time both the therapies have been outdated and has been banned in majority of the countries although by injecting insulin by causing hypoglycemic coma seizure was induced this was one of the therapy which was also introduced but at this point of time neither the insulin coma therapy or lobotomy is available and they are banned the origin of convulsive therapy is often attributed to manfred sackel the manfred sackel is the person who introduced insulin shock therapy or insulin coma therapy and electroconvulsive therapy was introduced by hugo serletti and lucio binio this in simple words serletti and binis the name 
please remember their full name Hugo Serletti and Lucio Beni who demonstrated that seizures can be introduced or induced more easily by giving electrical currents unfortunately Ladislas jaw when Meduna is not been attributed for convulsive therapy invariably when we talk about electroconvulsive therapy the complete credit goes to Hugo Serletti and Lucio Beni and we forget about Dr. Meduna and Manfred Sackel and if they ask you who is the person who brought this convulsive therapy is Dr. Meduna electroconvulsive therapy is Hugo Saletti and Lucio Bini. So, if you look back, this convulsive therapy started from chemical induction of seizure from 2nd January 1934 by injecting camphor or fentanyl, tetrazole, also called as metrazole or cardizole. Later, insulin coma therapy was introduced by Manfred Sackel. After that, in 11th April 1938, electrical stimulation was used by Saliti and Bini. So, from chemical stimulation of seizure to electrical stimulation, that is the evolution we need to remember. And in spite of more than 90 years, ECT continues to exist now also. That is the evolution of convulsive therapy. Let's understand once again by summarizing it. First, it was chemical induction of convulsion by introducing camphor, later insulin, later electrical induced convulsions were introduced. Further, once the anesthesia came into picture, before giving shock treatment, modified ECT came into picture. That is, before you give shock treatment, induce sedation, give anesthesia and muscle relaxant. Because when you give electrical current to the brain, the patient will have seizures. This seizure is violent contraction of muscles. In some patients, there may be fracture also. By giving muscle relaxation, you are going to prevent fracture. Further, there was modification. We were giving sine wave alternate current. Since it caused more cognitive deficits, and the stimulation was very minimal. Hence, brief pulse wave was introduced. And later, it was further refined to ultra brief wave electroconvulsive therapy. And further, the scientific advancement occurred with monitoring of these seizures by ECG, EEG, oxygen saturation, and also BP monitoring. And later, because of the stigma, human rights activist, anti-psychiatric movement, most of the countries have brought legal regulation for using electroconvulsive therapy. That means there are laws which dictate the psychiatrist when to use, when not to use and how not to use electroconvulsive therapy. Let's understand the theory behind, behind the ECT in the treatment of psychiatric illness. First and the foremost is forced normalization. What is this forced normalization? The comorbidity between epilepsy and psychosis is inversely related. Although at this point of time, we know they are inversely related at the same time, in certain, uh, certain subset of population, they may coexist also. But however, during 1930, they thought that Presence of seizure will cure psychosis. Whenever there is a seizure occurred, psychosis or schizophrenia got cured. That means the bureau disturbances vanished completely whenever there is a seizure. Hence, this was observed and this EEG phenomena was called as Landlot phenomena. And this is was introduced by 1953. And Landlot forced normalization is a EEG phenomena. That means absence of EEG activity which heralded the behavioral problems. Whenever there is a seizure activity on EEG that decreased the behavioral problems. That is antagonism of epilepsy and psychosis. That is biological antagonism. That is called as forced normalization. Let me summarize it. Whenever there is seizures on EEG Behavioral problems vanished. That is 
called as forced normalization, also called as Landolt phenomena. Moving to alternative psychosis. Helen Backhatch called this as an alternative psychosis. That means it is a clinical phenomena. The earlier was EEG phenomena. In this clinical phenomena, there is an alternating between seizures and psychosis. Whenever there is a seizure, psychosis vanished. Whenever the psychosis came, seizure vanished. That means again, it is a clinical antagonism. This is a clinical phenomena that is given by Tallenbach. But however, there is another important phenomena which was introduced by Wolf. The Wolf said that paradoxical normalization. In spite of EEG normalization, there is a deteriorating clinical picture. Wolf proposed this as paradoxical normalization. And this was clearly indicated by de degenerative changes seen in the brain, either in neuroimaging or in the postmortem. What does it mean? It is exactly opposite what is seen in forced normalization. In forced normalization, whenever there is a seizure, psychosis vanished. But in paradoxical normalization by Wolf, what he clearly said that whenever there is a seizure, psychosis appeared. That is paradoxical normalization, my dear friends. Now let's look into the mechanism of action. The first hypothesis was brain resetting. By inducing seizures through current, the whole brain got reset. This was the first hypothesis which was placed. That means in psychosis there is a disorganized behavior. By giving electrical stimulation and causing generalized tonic-clonic seizure, the whole functioning got reset. That means it became organized activity of the brain. That means resetting was the first hypothesis. The second hypothesis was the breach in blood-brain barrier. Whenever the electrical current was given, there was increased permeability in the blood-brain barrier. This permeability was thought an important factor which removed toxin from the brain and introduced medications which was given and also various protein and neurohormones were made available to the brain. This was the second hypothesis. Third hypothesis says by inducing seizures through electrical current, neurohormonal changes were brought. That means there was changes noted in dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine and sertraline. This was the third hypothesis. The fourth hypothesis was most of the psychiatric illness are inflammatory stages. That means psychiatric illness is a pro-inflammatory condition. By giving electroconvulsive therapy and inducing seizures, this dampened the cytokinins. That means the cytokines were inhibited. Thereby treating, by treating the psychiatric illness and normalizing the neuronal functioning was another important hypothesis. But however, in the Pinak et al. in 2016, introduced an important concept called as neuronal plasticity. Whenever there is a psychosis and electroconvulsive therapy is given, at the cellular level, you can see neurochemical changes and signaling differed further interneuronal interactions changed and through electron microscope they were able to see neuronal plasticity changes were noted in the hippocampus changes were noted in the various parts of the brain what are those changes that was neuronal plasticity the plasticity occurred at the synaptic junction neurohormonal dendritic spines the the synaptic neuronal plasticity was seen in most of the cases that was at cellular level but however the important mechanism was polymorphisms and gene expression which were induced by this electrical current that means various genes expressed during seizure activity that means it is a combination of epigenetics and neuronal plasticity played an important role in the mechanism of ECT. Electrically induced seizures have an epigenetic effect. That means ECT induced gene expression. Those genes are CFOS, TSF7, EGR1, uretin one BDNF, 
Snap29, Synaptogamin3, Synapsin, PSD95 and NPY. These are the various gene expression occurred. ECT has been shown to be associated with elevated neurotropic factors also. What are these neurotropic factors? Neuropeptide Y, vascular endothelial growth factor, glial cell line derived neurotropic factors, interleukin 8, interleukin 13 and of course BDNF. That means beyond the cellular level, gene expression from those genes, various hormones, neurohormones and various inflammatory, pro-inflammatory changes occurred. ECT-induced changes in the structural brain plasticity was noted. ECT was considered as a strong stimulator of neurogenesis by promoting the proliferation of stem cells, that is, synaptogenesis, neuron at neurogenesis, dendrogenesis, angiogenesis, and gliogenesis. That means, by giving electrical current, you are inducing certain changes in the brain. ECT causes modulation in the volume of the brain in the areas such as hippocampus, amygdala, anterior cingulate gyrus, medial and inferior temporal cortex. That means ECT brought in neuronal plasticity, my dear friend. Summarizing the mechanism of action of ECT, diverse biological mechanisms are involved. It is not single mechanism. It starts with expression of genes. Increase in the functional connectivity through neuronal plasticity, neurochemical plasticity, neurogenesis, that is by proliferation of stem cells, permeability of the blood brain barrier, alteration in the human system. That means it is combination of various factors play a crucial role in the improvement when the ECT is given. Let's understand the criticism. Now we know ECT is very useful and how it is evolved over a period of time and still after 90 years ECT continues to be used at present my dear friends. Let's understand why there is a lot of criticism, why society does not accept this electroconvulsive therapy. Also initially it was started as a convulsive therapy called as shock therapy. Whenever the camphor and insulin was given such as caridazole injections were given the patients went through a horrible state. They had perspiration, flushing, pallor, restlessness, salivation, panic attacks, shouting, tossing, rolling over the floor, moaning, thrashing around and finally the seizure. It was very difficult to control it and sometimes death occurred. That was convulsive therapy my dear friend when camphor and cardizol was given. Later, during the Second World War, shock treatment was indiscriminately used against the soldiers, against innocent people and it was used for research that added to the stigma. Unmodified ECTs without giving anesthesia and muscle relaxant, it looked very very scary for public and memory deficits added to the problem. Restraining used during unmodified ECT considered to be using ECT against the wish of the patient. ECT used in violent patient was considered as a punishment to the patient or a threat to the patient. Many doctors, nurses, ward boys used to say to the patient, if you behave like this, we will give ECT, we will give shock treatment that added further stigma to the patient and also to the ECT. ECT was not given with informed consent earlier. Further, the media played an important role in exaggerating the myths, exaggerating the electroconvulsive therapy's dangerousness. One of the important movie which was considered to be a blockbuster, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, fueled the misperception about the ECT. In the public, then onwards, ECT has been used against the heroes in the film, not against the villains. And here, you may consider mentally ill person as a villain or the heroes 
who are psychiatrically ill patients have been given shock treatment. Whenever the word shock treatment comes in, patient and the family members refuse it and they don't give consent for treatment. This media continues to show ECT in a very bad light, although it is very effective treatment. And nowadays, we have an, a very good technology which is given under anesthesia is continues to be discarded by many doctors, nurses and also by the physicians across various fraternity and of course the society. At this point of time, electroconvulsive therapy is one of the longest survived biological treatment my dear friend. And ECT was also used as a threat or a treatment for homosexuals, transgender. This fueled for the anti-psychiatry movement. This anti-psychiatry movement also played a role. There is no psychiatrically ill patients. There is nothing called as mental illness. If there is no mental illness, that means what is the use of electroconvulsive therapy? Hang in. ACT became a victim here. Further, there were hypotheses. There were various rumors going around. ECT causes brain damage, memory loss. That added further to the stigma. Further, anesthesia in the early days was very dangerous. But however, nowadays, medical technology has taken huge leaps and bounds. From there, we are able to give ECT safely under anesthesia and muscle relaxant. Death due to ECT and anesthesia is 0.0001%. That means 1 to 2 per 1 lakh patients. That is very, very minimal at this point of time, my dear friends. Hence, there are legal regulations as put across to ECT at this point of time. The main reason being is society does not accept ECT. However, scientific Literature says that ECT is one of the effective treatment at this point of time, although it is temporarily, it is a temporary action occurs. ECT being effective treatment, but considering the stigma and discrimination, laws have been introduced. For example, Mental Health Care Act of 2017, Section 94 prohibits using ECT as an emergency treatment. That means if the patient comes violent, you cannot give ECT immediately. You need to admit him, do certain basic investigation, then only you can give ECT. That means emergency treatment is being prohibited by giving ECT. Unmodified ECT. Section 95 clearly says that you cannot give ECT without giving anesthesia and muscle relaxant. That means modified ECT can be given. Further, Section 95 also says that ECT in minor cannot be given just by informed consent of the patient or the family members or the legal guardians. Permission from Mental Health Review Board is a must. That means there are various regulations have been placed by the law for giving electroconvulsive therapy. At this point of time, whenever you want to give ECT, please look into the laws. What does the law dictate? whether it can be given as an emergency treatment, whether it has to be given only through anesthesia and muscle relaxant, you need to comply with that. That is very important, my dear friends. Now the question is, ECT has survived almost 8 to 9 decades. What is the future of ECT? Future of neurostimulation? At this point of time, electrical stimulation was done. Now, there are various other stimulation was being come. That is magnetic stimulation. Of course, electrical field causes magnetic field. Similarly, you can induce electrical current in the brain neurons by giving magnetic field. So, transcranial magnetic stimulation is one of the important treatment for depression is available at this point of time. Vagus nerve stimulation. Here, the direct current is passed to the vagus nerve by causing improvement in the mood. Deep brain stimulation, transcranial direct stimulation is another important treatment that is TDCS, various placement of anion, cathodes and various 
TDCS mechanisms have been used at this point of time. So my dear friend, ECT is going to be here. That means if you are able to induce seizure by any other mechanism, safer than electrical current that will be adopted, similar to transcranial magnetic stimulation. Although the magnetic field does not produce such a kind of ECT generated therapeutic effect, but if you are able to come up with alternative to current, that will be adopted by the medical field and by the society. But however, please remember this. ECT continues to exist in most of the developed countries and treatment guidelines also is available in most of the countries with regard when to use, how to use ECT. And there are laws which are regulating electroconvulsive therapy, my dear friend, to protect the society, society from indiscriminate use of ECT. To conclude, although convulsive therapy and electroconvulsive therapy is a controversial treatment which existed since 8 to 9 decades, but the scientific mechanism, the improvement in the medical technology, improvement in the anesthesia has improved the acceptability of ECT in the society. It has evolved from unmodified ECT to modified ECT. It has evolved from chemical induced seizure to electrical induced seizure. ECT is now moved on to transcranial magnetic stimulation, deep brain stimulation. That means the brain requires some kind of stimulation. Seizure is one of the mechanism. And there are few patients who gets benefited by electroconvulsive therapy, my dear friend. And it has been found to be very useful and effectively reduces severity of symptoms whenever you want to control the symptoms rapidly. And ECT is the treatment of choice in patients who are highly dangerous or who are dangerous to self. That means suicidal attempt or attempted suicide kind of patients get benefited by electroconvulsive therapy. So thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.